Welcome. In this video, we will introduce the idea of parallel lines. So on the right hand side, we have a visual interpretation of how parallel lines look like. In the past, maybe you have defined them as two lines that do not intersect with each other. And that's partially right. We will define parallel lines more clearly in a second. But one thing or one scenario that I do want to introduce is what if these two parallel lines and before we dive in a little bit deeper, let, let me just briefly discuss the notation. To notate that these two lines are parallel, we can draw an extra arrow within them. These small arrows that I just draw down in red, they can also be seen as the notation to indicate that those two lines are parallel to each other. Okay, I just want to discuss that real quick. Now let's, let's come back to the scenario. So what if we have these two parallel lines? And then we draw a new line that actually intersects those two lines. So let's do that in blue here. This type of line, it's something that we define as a transversal line. It is a line that transverse two lines. In this case, it is a line that intersects those two parallel lines. When this scenario happens, notice that we have actually created a lot of new angles. We have created this new angle. Let's call it one, another one here, another one here, and another one here. And also we have created another one here, another one here, another one here, and another one here. By having two parallel lines and introducing this transversal line, we have actually created eight different new angles. And there are some relationships among those angles. Notice that we can classify them into groups. We have vertical angles. And again, by definition, remember that vertical angles are angles that are opposite of each other. I mean, we can definitely define some of them here. We can see that angle two and angle four are vertical. They are opposite of each other. So perhaps one pair of vertical angles, it was angle two and also angle four. And notice that we also have angle one being opposite to angle three. Okay. So also another pair will be angle one and angle three. We also have angle five and angle seven. So five and seven. And lastly, notice that we also have angle six and angle eight. And it's not just vertical angles that are being created. We have also created supplementary angles. And remember that by definition, supplementary angles are angles whose sum is 180 degrees. In other words, they form a line. There's a lot of them. Well, I don't think I want to be listing all of them, but note that in this case, if I just consider this section right here, Notice that if I add angle one and angle two, I'm essentially creating a line. Therefore, I can say that angle one and angle two are supplementary angles. So we can say that angle one and angle two are supplementary. Notice that by that same definition, if I just consider on this line, if I add angle three and if I add angle four, I create a whole line. So therefore I can say that angle three and angle four are supplementary and there's a lot of them i mean instead of looking at that line we could also create it, this line and we can see that if i add angle two and angle three i'm essentially creating another line so therefore angle two and angle three and we're not going to list all of them but as you can see here there's a lot of them that are being created one thing that i do want to point out is that anytime we have the situation where we have two parallel lines and then we introduce what we're going to refer to as a transversal line, 
we are essentially creating different kind of angles, vertical angles and supplementary angles. In our next lesson, we will discuss what properties do these angles have. But as of right now, we all, since this is an introduction lesson, all we want to do, we want to just identify them. So now that we have this scenario out of the way, let's, let's, let's backtrack and let's go back to this idea of how do you properly define parallel lines? So for that, let's look at a definition. There are two words that we will be defining here, parallel lines and skew lines. So parallel lines, we are going to define them as lines that do not intersect and they are on the same plane. So what do we mean by that? Well, if we consider a plane, I don't know, let's just draw a plane here. Within this plane, I draw a line. So let's say here we have a line. Let's call it M. And then I draw another line that does not intersect line M. Let's call it N. Notice that these two lines are on the same plane. They do not intersect, then therefore they are parallel. They are on the same plane. Therefore, I can categorize them as parallel lines. And the notation that we can have is the following. The notation that we can use is just two vertical lines to indicate the lines are parallel. So if we take a look at the example that we have here, if we want to say that line M and line N are parallel to each other, then we can say that M is parallel to line N. So what's the deal? Like, what is the difference between parallel lines and skew lines? So if I take a look at the same scenario, and before looking at the scenario, sorry, let's define them. So skew lines are going to be lines that do not intersect. And they are not on the same plane. I think I, I forgot to write the word same here. So you should not just say they are on the plane, but they are on the same plane. How does that look like? Well, again, let me just draw a plane. So this is just a regular plane. So here we have our plane and I draw a line. Let's say I call this line M. And then if I, and then if I draw another line that is not on the same plane, let's say I do it right underneath it, line N, notice that these two lines are not gonna be intersecting with each other. They, they do look parallel, but they are on a different plane. If this is the scenario, then we can say that these two lines are skew instead of parallel. So this is why I wrote down that sentence is right because that is the main difference between them two. Parallel lines are two lines that are on the same plane and do not intersect with each other. And skew lines are lines that still do not intersect with each other, but they are in different planes. Let's take a look at one example and let's identify some of those lines. So here in this scenario, we have a fish tank. And what we want to do is we want to identify certain properties within this fish tank. So let's take a look at example A. We want to identify lines that are parallel to CD. Okay, now CD is a line segment. So lines that are parallel to CD. Now, if we're looking for parallel lines, we need to make sure that they are on the same plane. Let's start by identifying where CD is. CD, we can see it as this section of the fish tank from this point to this point. 
Now, what is the plane that CD is on? Notice that CD is in two different planes. CD can be seen as being part of this upper plane, like the upper section of this fish tank. And if that is the case, then notice that BA can be seen as being parallel. Those are two lines or two line segments in this case that are not intersecting with each other and they are on the same plane. They are on the plane that is on the top of the fish tank. So we can say that. We can say that CD is parallel to BA. Now, is that the only line segment that CD is parallel to? Well, if instead of just concentrating on the upper plane, what if we consider, so let me do that again. What if we consider now the plane on the right hand side? This plane, the plane that we have on the right hand side. Well, if that is the case, then notice that also CD is parallel to GH. They are on a different plane, not a problem, but we also. Uh, they're also not intersecting with each other. So if we take a look at the perspective of a different plane, we can also see that CD is also parallel to GH. So notice that all we needed to make sure is that they were on the same plane and they were not intersecting with each other. Now, this does not mean that CD is parallel to GH because, I'm sorry, this does not mean that BA is parallel to GH. They are on different planes. So please, let's be careful with that. Let's take a look at the next one. Lines that are perpendicular to CD. Again, let's start by identifying where CD is at. CD, we have it from here to here. And we want to identify lines that are perpendicular to CD. If one more, if we can concentrate on the upper plane, so let's concentrate just on the upper plane. We can see that if it's a corner of a fish tank, usually they are done in a 90 degree intersection. So we can see that this angle right here, it creates 90 degrees. And if that is the case, then we can say that BC is perpendicular to CD. And by the same idea, we can see that we have another 90 degrees in here. And if that is the case, then we can say that AD is perpendicular to CD. So they need to be on the same plane. Good. Do they seem to be creating 90 degrees as an intersection? Yes. Then therefore we can kind of claim that they're perpendicular to each other. Now let's identify lines that are skewed to CD. So here we have the word skew. And remember the difference between parallel and skew. Parallel is that lines are on the same plane and skew, they are not on the same plane. So let me just clear this up. So let's start. Where is CD? So one more CD, it's around here. And notice that CD is located in the plane that is the upper and the plane that is on the right hand side as well. Is there any line segment that it's not on either of those two planes? Well, how about the other corner that we have here from the fish tank, FE? Notice that FE it's neither on those two planes and we can see that FE does not intersect with CD. They are on opposite sides of the end of the fish tank. So this line segment FE fulfills the definition of a skew line. So therefore, we can claim that CD is skewed with the line segment FE. Remember that for skew, they don't need to be, or they are not on the same plane. So this fulfills the definition. And lastly, 
we want to identify planes that are parallel to the plane CDH. So let's erase this. Where is CDH? CDH, uh, where's that? Oh, that's the right hand side. So this is the plane that we are concentrated on, CDH. And we want to see, is there any other plane that is parallel to this other plane? Well, it's definitely not the upper plane because it is intersecting right here. Definitely not the upper plane because it is intersecting at this point. It is definitely not the lower plane because again, in here we're intersecting, therefore they're not parallel to each other. But what if we consider this plane that is on the right hand side, the plane who has the endpoints B, A, E, and F. If we consider this plane, notice that it's definitely not intersecting the plane on the right hand side. Therefore, they are parallel to each other. So we can say that the plane, remember how do we name planes? We only need three different points. Does it matter which ones we use? No. We can have B, A, E, B, A, F, we only need to use three. So I'm going to use, um, I don't know, F, E, A. So I'm just using this three points right here. F, E, A. Doesn't matter. I only need to use three different points. So do not forget about this big idea, the idea between the difference among skew lines and parallel lines. And that's pretty much one of the main topics within this lesson. Skew lines are lines that do not intersect and they are on different planes and parallel lines are lines that do not intersect and they are on the same plane. Hello, if you would like to continue to learn about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.